Push-ups are a fundamental calisthenic movement that require no equipment and can be performed anywhere there is solid ground. In my opinion, they're a top tier push exercise and have contributed massively to my chest development. Just as you would never stop training the fundamental basics in sport, training the basic fundamentals in calisthenics should also be a lifelong commitment. This doesn't need to be a boring pursuit either, as there are so many different ways to train the push-up that you're not gonna get bored of doing the same old, same old anytime soon, and will continue to stay engaged with your workouts, hopefully for life. Seeking novelty can admittedly sometimes be a distraction from what is truly important. But the other side of the coin is that it can improve adherence to your workouts as it keeps things fresh and interesting. It reduces the risk of an overuse injury and increases the enjoyment factor of your training sessions. As someone with over a decade of training experience, I've come to peace with the fact that it is unrealistic to expect to find every training session fun. In saying this, I can't think of a time that I've truly regretted going to a training session, and there is always some secondhand fun and satisfaction involved after completing a hard session. But, like most everyone else, sometimes I lack motivation, sometimes I feel lethargic and tired, and sometimes I just have other unforeseen and unexpected things get in the way of training. One of the things that has helped me adhere to my calisthenics workouts over my fitness journey is finding more novel exercises to incorporate and more advanced variations to pursue. I will always include the fundamental basics such as push-ups, pull-ups and squats at the base of my workouts with more novel movements and harder variations as accessory work either at the end of my session or during a small separate skill-based session after I've rested and refueled. I've ordered the push-up tier list from most difficult to least difficult, starting with the planche push-up. This exercise is something I'm yet to achieve. However, it's definitely on the list of advanced calisthenics movements that I'm trying to unlock. You'll need to build an insane amount of core, shoulder and straight arm strength to achieve this incredible human movement. You can regress the difficulty of the movement through doing the straddle planche, using bands to assist, or even doing the pseudo planche push-up, which will work many of the same muscles, just to a lesser extent. Keep in mind, the more mass you're carrying in your lower body, the harder this exercise will be to achieve. And if you are on the taller side, you're working with longer levers and also facing extra challenges. But don't let this discourage you in your pursuit of unlocking this movement. In the grand scheme of things, it really just means extra strength gains along the journey. Next up on the list is the handstand push-up. The handstand push-up requires a solid combination of strength and balance. It is a shoulder and tricep dominant movement, but you'll notice if you start to train them frequently that it also incorporates an unexpected amount of grip strength. I'm always surprised about how fatigued my hands get after training them. This is because you are using your fingers to make constant micro adjustments to maintain balance. To achieve this movement, work handstands separately to master the balance component and work handstand push-ups against the wall to master the strength aspect. Once you can confidently and consistently do both, put them both together and master the handstand push-up. The one-arm push-up was one of the first advanced calisthenics movements that I set my sights on. It looks cool, and in relation to other advanced calisthenics movements, it's really not that difficult to achieve. A tip I wish I'd been given when first starting out is to take a wide base with your feet to help with the balance component of the movement. A good regression to help unlock the one-arm push-up is working archer push-ups. Archer push-ups help develop the unilateral strength required when working toward one-arm push-ups and are a great stepping stone exercise toward the goal. I'd also recommend warming up with archer push-ups before attempting a one-arm push-up to help reduce the risk of injury, as one-arm push-ups put a decent amount of strain on the shoulder, elbow, and wrist joints. Next up is the reverse push-up. It's a very unorthodox movement, but it's become a staple in my training as I'm trying to develop shoulder and tricep strength. It also takes a surprising amount of core strength to keep your hips aligned and prevent your butt from sagging. You'll notice that after only a few reps, I struggle to maintain good form and the tricep burn is unmatched. Give them a crack next training session and let me know what you think. Here we have the elevated pipe push-up, which is another great stepping stone movement toward the handstand push-up. It builds the shoulder and tricep strength required and can be made more or less difficult by simply adjusting the incline. Start out with the regular pike push-up and set the goal of working toward higher inclines for greater gains.
The Hindu push-up is an amazing movement as it combines both strength and mobility. You're building good shoulder and arm strength during the pushing phase of the movement and improving mobility and flexibility at the end range of motion as it stretches out the core, hamstrings, quads and back. If there was one exercise I would suggest doing for overall health and function, it'd have to be the Hindu push-up. Fingertip push-ups are a great way to improve grip strength and increase the range of motion of the regular push-up. It's surprising how much harder the movement becomes when you increase the range of motion even slightly as you do when you come up onto the fingertips, as you are required to travel further to achieve the full range of motion. This leads on to deficit push-ups. Deficit push-ups are a great way to increase the range of motion of the regular push-up, which has many benefits. For one, you're increasing your strength in a greater range of motion, which helps bulletproof joints and ligaments in this more compromised position. A greater range of motion in itself also gives you better mobility gains, as you are getting more of a stretch by going deeper into the exercise. Be cautious though, the stretch should feel intense, but never painful. Work within your limits and be patient when it comes to mobility and flexibility gains as it takes a lot longer for ligaments and tendons to grow than it does muscles. Following this is the decline push-up. Decline push-ups are quite a bit harder than regular push-ups as gravity is applying more resistance to the muscles. There is a point of diminishing returns however as when the incline becomes too steep it becomes more of a shoulder and tricep dominant movement rather than targeting the desired muscle being the upper chest. So no need to go crazy with the incline. Experiment and find what works best for you. Hey, hey buddy. You're freezer. The diamond push-up heavily targets the triceps. In saying this, I also notice that I get the most incredible chest pump when doing these, as the my muscle connection when contracting at the top of the movement is unmatched. Moving on, we have wide push-ups. Wide push-ups are a great chest builder, but it's not an exercise I'd recommend doing an insane amount of volume on. As the wider you go, the harder it is not to flare the elbows, and this puts additional strain on your joints. So don't go insanely wide. Experiment and find what's most comfortable specifically for you. Now we have my personal favorite, knuckle push-ups. Why is this movement my favorite? Simply because of the benefits it has on building wrist strength. As someone who spends a good amount of their life punching bags, pads, and people at Muay Thai training, wrist conditioning is extremely important to me. Thus far in my journey, I'm yet to sustain any wrist injuries, despite sometimes training six days a week for up to four hours a day. I largely contribute this to the preliminary wrist strength that my calisthenics trainings have built. For further conditioning, you can progress towards wrist push-ups. This will be especially important if you train martial arts or just have an unhealthy habit of jacking it to the hub. We then of course have regular push-ups. This movement needs no introduction. It is a well-deserved top tier fundamental calisthenic movement that is king when it comes to building chest, tricep and shoulder strength. There is a reason this exercise has stood the test of time and it will always be the number one calisthenics exercise for chest development in my book. I need not say more. Finally, we have the knee push-up, a great entry-level calisthenics movement for those who are new. At the start of my calisthenics journey, before I could even do a single push-up, this regression helped me train all the same muscle groups as the standard push-up, and eventually led to my first bit of progress, achieving the full push-up. The rest was history, as to this day, I'm still hooked on the calisthenics journey. So no matter where you are in your journey, there is always progress to be made. Keep up the good work. And as always, drop any comments, questions, or abuse down below. Cheers.